I thought today we'd uh, come check out the Arc de Triomphe and specifically, what are they doing here? Like you can see there's still construction behind me, but in the middle they finished a whole lot of construction. Like for years, there's been stuff around the base. They've been cleaning up the statues, maybe. And also they reduced the roundabout by at least a lane of traffic, if not two. So I thought we'd come check that out this morning and then we can join my buddy Nate for lunch. He's on his way to Madagascar, just passing through town. Had a drink with him last night. Wouldn't want to rob you of a little Nate time. And then, uh, I don't know, we'll see where the day takes us. I've never seen a transplanted bench before. The root system is terrible. You can go way deeper than that. All right, first things first, when you're exiting at Etoile, Charles de Gaulle Etoile is the station that we're at right now. Don't follow the signs to the Arc de Triomphe. Exit one is gonna take you on a really long circuitous route all the way like underground back up. Dude, it's a mess, just take the exit two. This is a... It's ridiculous and also pops you out in like the most obvious spot, which you can find shortly, no problem. My preference is exit number two, Avenue de Friedland. Two reasons, one, it's just right here. It's literally just right here. For lines one and six in particular, you get out of the metro the fastest and you're above ground. And for two, it's just a really nice reveal of the arc when you're walking up the stairs. I like it, it's underrated. Now, while there will always be crowds at Etoile and people you know, taking their photos in front of the Arc de Triomphe, and sometimes it can be kind of hard to get your own space <laughs> to get your photo. This is a little bit lighter, so this is nicer. A couple of tips before we go across, because the main thing I want to check is like what they've done actually at the, uh, at the Arc de Triomphe. You notice that around the square, there's still a little bit of construction. They've cleaned up most of it. But like right here, this I think is finished. I don't really know what the final plan is supposed to look like. But like we saw this morning, there's still some big piles of dirt and some things happening on some parts of the roundabout. And the two tips that I'll give you for the Arc de Triomphe, if you don't know, is that when you want to get to the Arc itself, like you want to go out to the middle of the roundabout, do not cross traffic. Like don't run through the cars. There is a tunnel. The tunnel is located on either side of the main, like the front face that you can see right here is facing the Champs Elysees and Avenue de la Grande Armée. And if you go to either of those sides, you'll find a hole underground, a tunnel that goes down, stairs that go down, straight underneath traffic, and then pop back up in the middle. The second thing, I'll show you inside, but I think we should just go up, let's, let's go under, let's go check it out. All right, here's the tunnel in question. It's really, really obvious and easy to find. One last tip before we go in though, side tip, photography tip. If you want a good photo of you in the Arc de Triomphe with good lighting, morning, Champs-Élysées side, evening, Grand Armée side. Crowds always are on the Champs Elysees side. So if you want a less crowded shot with a lot less people hanging around, the other side's usually the best ticket. But the lighting's better in the evening, so let's go underground and see what happens. Okay, so the second tip that I was going to give you is specifically for this line right here. If you find yourself in this line, you've made some huge life mistakes. The thing is, all you have to do is buy your tickets online, and then you can skip this line. You'll notice that there's a ticket office line and a non-ticket office line. So if you already have them. Go to the right, there's a big gaping hole and you can go straight up. There will be another line waiting for you upstairs to get into the Arc de Triomphe, but at least you can skip the whole waiting process here. As you can see, it's actually getting mad here and all, of you, all you need is like one bus to unload or one school field trip to show up and it's just game over. So we're gonna, we're gonna skip this part. I'm also not going up the Arc today, so we don't need a ticket. That gives you some hot tips for how to get to the Arc de Triomphe, if you didn't know. Some basics. What I really want to see though, what we're here for, is behind you. Look, look behind you! What is this? What? I mean, I'm not disapproving, I'm just like, what is happening here? Okay, what interests me most, granted the Arc is always beautiful, it's nice to see it, is this. These are lanes that used to be filled with cars, and I know them well because I ride my bike through here all the time. I'm just that kind of crazy. I love riding my bike through here. These barriers are set up to keep cars from entering these lanes of traffic. I don't know exactly what this is gonna look like in the end. We're gonna do a little research. I actually have the inside scoop on some Olympics updates coming soon. I think we'll do some regular check-ins. Paris, you can come back and see what's going because over the next six months, the city is going to evolve in some very strange and hopefully permanent ways. Like I'm, I know that anybody that drives in the city probably hates the fact that these lanes have been taken up like this, but personally, I think it's great. I don't know, I, the, the more space we have for pedestrians, for bikes, for green spaces, I'm actually all, all for it. That's the final tip for visiting Paris. Do not rent a car, don't drive in Paris. Like you only rent cars to leave Paris. 
don't do it when you're here. Well, we'll talk more about car renting some other time. If you're interested in renting cars and traveling the rest of France, let me know in the comments below. But, oh, one last thing. I almost completely forgot. Cooper found a stick, so he's happy. Uh, 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 uh. I almost forgot. I've, I wore the, the thematic shirt for the day. Be sure to go to store.parismypocket.com. Grab your Paris Pocket tee right away, and Cooper will love you forever. Won't you, buddy? Will you? I don't know. There's only, if I'm doing my math right, there's only 15 days left to get these. Free sale, parasmypocket.com. You'll see a button at the top or store.parasmypocket.com. It'll take you straight there. Grab one, two, three, all of them. I don't know. Clothe your entire family. They'll enjoy it. It's funny. Is it funny? It's cute. I don't know. We're having a good time. Anyways, we're going to go get lunch with Nate now, but there's a lot of stuff changing around the city. Trocadero's under a lot of construction. Place de la Concorde supposedly is going to get completely taken over and never given back to cars, which would be epic confusing we'll see what happens there there are gonna be a lot of parts of the city that get kind of taken over by the games some will be given back some won't huge plans to convert like the champs Elysees into a long park don't know how that's gonna work if it's gonna work and some of the more ambitious plans have already been scrapped uh, along the way but some of them haven't and i'm actually discovering some of this now so i'll be sure to let you know more as i know more uh and yeah in the meantime i'm really hungry let's go get one of my favorite chinese spots in the 10th which is just a couple of rondes months away and I'll introduce you to Nate if you haven't met him before. Sorry to keep you waiting. Yeah, well, you know, I took a roundabout way. I was going to ask Nate because his jobs have changed a lot in the last few years and he's a hospital director, but he's a hospital director of multiple hospitals. What is your actual title? My title is called Senior Director of Clinical Services. Okay, that's a bigger title than I was expecting too. He's, he's amazing. You should, I don't, can people, how do people, do you have a, a blog or anything actually? I don't, you don't. No, I don't. There's no way to check him out. Just trust me, he's awesome. That's actually an interesting question. Probably like I actually met Nate in Togo. We met in Lome, which is my second year of serving with Mercy Ships. Your second time in Lome, as I recall, because you'd been there pre-nursing, and then you went and became a nurse and then came back to nurse on the ship, right? Second time in, second time on the ship, yeah. I thought you'd been to Togo before. No, oh, that was your first time in yeah. Togo, oh, okay. Yeah, you showed me the ways. I feel like I feel the same way about you. <laughs> but Lome was where I, I learned my love of shawarmas because there was a shawarma place that everybody went to that wasn't that far from the ship. So Lebanese food, it was like my introduction to Lebanese food. And right at the end of our time there, when I got stuck on the other side of a riot, like on the wrong side of a riot, and I was like, you know what, I don't really want to deal with people throwing bricks at my car today. So I took the long way back from the airport and found this Lebanese market on the far side of the ring road and stopped at it and was like, I wonder if these guys have shawarma. And I went into the back and I was like, do you guys sell by any chance shawarmas? And they're like, yeah. And then made me like the best chicken shawarma I've ever had in my life served to me. And I was like, we're leaving in a month? And I've never been back and I don't know if it's still there. Yeah, I don't think I ever went there with you. Did you never go there? No, I don't think so. It was on the other side of KFG. You remember KFG? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Sure did. Which I've heard is closed, Green unfortunately. Fields. Remember that spot? Yeah. Anyways, we can stop reminiscing about food in West Africa, but uh, I don't know if you, unless you had anything to add. No, nothing to add, <laughs> other than Le Galleon. Oh, Le Galleon, we talked about Le Galleon yeah, last night. Le Galleon Le G was a French restaurant that we would go to that had live music on Fridays. And we would go chill, I'd ride my motorcycle there. First country I owned a motorcycle in. And the food took so long to come out that we would eat the table bread, which was, had been there long enough to completely dry out. The only way to make it moist and palatable again was to put this mustard on it that they had. The mustard was the hottest, like spiciest, like make you cry mustard. But I was so hungry that I would eat it. And I'm pretty sure that's also the beginning of when I started to tolerate and then eventually enjoy spicy food. So there you go, there's some Togo stories for you in, in, a, in a nutshell. Thanks to today's patron producer, Brad Schumard, and all my patrons for making it possible to come out and see what's going on with all the construction around town. I learned a lot about Place de la République recently, actually, too. I'll have to talk about that at some point. 